Hello and welcome to another video. Let's look at more preset deconstructions of, this time, Applied Acoustic Systems Multiphonics CV2. Now this isn't um, a regular synthesizer, it is a what we call a modular synthesizer or sound making thingamajig which basically means that you can order the components that we might normally make a synthesizer from, like an oscillator and um, filters and uh, envelopes and that kind of thing. You can organise them however you want, um, assuming that it is actually going to make a sound, which is the important part. And Multiphonics is a uh, modular environment where we get little bits of pieces to connect together to make our crazy noises in the way we want to make them. It's cool, flexible stuff. Uh, you have to kind of know what you're doing to to um, make good noises, to, to be comfortable making the noises in the way you want to make them. It's good to have an understanding of what on earth is going on in these crazy little tools. So because these are modular environments, my classic um, coloured guide to the signal flow uh, in, in it is a bit different, basically, because there is no regular signal flow, basically. The signal signals come in from your controller devices, like your MIDI track or your keyboard or whatever, and those signals are split up into little no on and off moments, triggers for releasing the on and for describing the on and the off or a gate signal to describe the note being held down, voltages, like virtual voltages to describe the pitch, and modulation sources like mod wheels and um, oh, well, pitch bends here, but these are mod, mod modulation devices and velocity here. This is mod one, and this is uh, normally a mod modulation wheel. This is another modula modulation kind of source, but I uh, don't have it on my keyboard at the moment. So let's hope none of the patches use that. Uh, they shouldn't do, I have just kind of checked. But the signal flow is basically signals come in through here and then do stuff in this lower part. This bit at the top here is fixed. These are like the fixed panels. We've got the input signal stuff. It all goes into the area down here, does some wangly amazing stuff and then comes out of your output mixer. Some, something will go back out of the patch down here somewhere into the output mixer so you can hear it. And um, that could be just a weird uh, DC offset signal generated from an LFO or an ADSR or something, or it could be something useful like the sound of an oscillator having gone through some devices. Or the sound of another part of the system having gone through some devices. And we've got this macro thing up here, which you'll probably be familiar with in terms of most synthesizers have macros these days. They're kind of, these days there's sort of multi-use knobs that you can define to do different things in your patch in your synthesizer. And same goes for here. These can be attached to no, numerous different knobs and things in the in the patch to kind of change things simply, rather than having to dig around in the patch and find the thing. Uh, so that's the, that's the macros, you know what they are, and here's the master clock, which is basically sort of saying, yes, either listening to the host tempo, um, where you might have uh, external, or you can have internal tempo, where you des describe your own tempo, and how that, how those kind of clicks and stuff are passed through the patch, because these are output slots, and you can uh, you get clicks and stuff from here that you can use to send into the patch. But anyway, here's the patch sort of general overview signals come in here noise comes and does amazing beautiful things in here and then it goes back out to the output mixer that's the whole thing that's that's what modulus it's easy modular synthesis is easy okay that's kind of a really cruddy overview of modular synthesis um particularly for just multiphonics um at the moment so let's have a look at a sound now I've made a track here as as usual that's just sort of all made from noises of the synthesizer so let's just click play and see what misery um, awaits us. Ah yes. Oh there's a... Oh it's grungy. Don't know what style it is, who knows? But we can start at the top because these are all things 
they're all bits of a of a of, of an arrangement you'll be familiar with. So we'll start at a kick. Kicks are fairly simple pieces of sound design. Uh, ultimately, it can be achieved. You can get a decent enough kick with just a sine wave and a pitch envelope that's describing how that sine wave's being made from uh, being moved from a high frequency to a low frequency. That's kind of what's going on here. So we've got the gate coming out of the control. That's the only thing we've got here. This isn't pitch control. There's nothing coming out of the pitch. We're just looking at the gate, the trigger, the note going down. That's triggering this envelope here. Signals going out of here into this VCA, which is a kind of amplifier, turning it up and down. Kind of amplifying it, basically. And you can change the offset, the bias, and these kinds of things. But this is just amplifying the signal to go into the modulation port of the main frequency, the main tuning knob of the oscillator, this classic VCO. So that's going in here. So we've also got a macro knob going into this same knob here. So let's just turn that up, see what that does. I mean, I can tell you what it's doing. It is offsetting the middle pitch. So you can hear the whole sort of kicks going up in pitch. If I put that back down to where it was and look at that value, what oh, we've got there, 0.8. So and we've got E1 there. So this is basically doing what, what that's doing, but just to a smaller range. Have your, have your kick nice and high. There we go, back, back to the kick. And we've also got after that a way to turn the signal down because at the moment all this is doing is this oscillator is continuous and we just have this little patch here, this pre-patch here that's telling it to change pitch. And ultimately it's just going on forever. So we need another little bit of the, of the signal controller after this. Um, so this classic VCO here, we can see this line coming out of here. This is like a sign signal, a nice clean kick, kick signal going into this VCA here, or the VCA, and this is being controlled by this ADSR envelope controller here. Out of here, you can see going into this VCA here, and the signal from the sine wave coming out, going into the VCA as well. So this is basically making the signal sound shorter. So we can play with that as well. We've got a macro knob up here attached to that, I might be able to hear that. I'll turn the center pitch up a bit. And then if we increase the decay, because this macro knob's attached to the decay of the of the amplitude half of the envelope. So you can hear it's that kick is just there for longer. That that low part of the signal is hanging around a bit longer. Uh, and that's what that does basically it's just changing the volume so we can make it yeah longer shorter we want a nice tight kick for this song we don't want a massive thing that's hanging around loads of sub so this is good this is a nice short kick thanks to Venus Theory for this nice simple kick and that's that's a simple kick sound. Kick sounds can be massively more complicated than this. Can They can be full of, well, they can be constructed from, I've seen people talk about three layers, your, your click, your, your thud, and your boom kind of thing. Um, they don't have to be that complicated. They can be as simple as this. Depends on the music and where you want the kick, what you want the kick to actually do, what its purpose is. But yeah, that's... <laughs> in perspective of a clap we're about to look at. And there we go, that's the kick. Let's move on to the clap. This is a nice simple sound, isn't it? We like we like simplicity. Beauty comes in its uh, greatest form in simplicity. I can't remember all the phrases. Simplicity is beautiful, as I think a lot of pop music will demonstrate. But what is going on here? Let's have a quick look. So we've got the keyboard area has a cable coming out of the on trigger. So when a note goes down, we're not listening to when the note goes off or how long we held the note down for. We're just triggering something with this thing here. What are we triggering? We're triggering a pulse. We're triggering a very short pulse. And what is that doing? That 
is feeding the um, amplitude of an LPG. This is a low pass gate. So it's opening up the low pass gate with this little pulse. We can probably make it shorter. We can make that. So there we go. Tiny little bit of something happening. But what are we doing? What's going into this low pass gate here? It is noise. It's this noise here. And this is continuously coming out. We don't need to reset this or do anything. It's just coming out or whatever kind of noise is uh, described by the density. We can probably... get an idea without having to take the whole patch apart and listen to these components separately. So this is, yeah, just a, uh, maybe something to do with the number of noise parts being generated per um, second or something. Probably needs a closer look, but in general, it's sending out a continuous noise signal going into this CV, into this low pass gate. Let's make this time that this gate is open for a little bit longer from this low pass output. There we go. Ooh. We can, I mean, you can really hear the low passness of that gate. Like not here, it's just like high frequencies. But as soon as we put it down, you can hear that kind of bubbling. That's the the filter in here because it's a low pass gate is not just volume, it's also filter. So it's closing the volume down by shutting the filter down as well. And I suspect we can open the filter up wider by doing that. But let's close it down a bit. To make those claps sound a bit duller. Um, yeah, that's basically it. We've got a bit of noise going into a low pass gate, and the low pass gate is being opened by this um, pulse signal here that's being triggered every now and again by the keyboard. It's a nice, simple patch. What does it say here? The CV bias input opens the LPG with a smooth and wide envelope from the low pass pulse signal. CV bias input. Oh, right, so yeah. That's the filter in the low pass gate being opened up. So by default, it's at minimum, and we're opening it up with this little pulse signal. And because it's listening, because there's a bit of noise going through the low pass gate, that's what we can hear. The low pass gate is filtering some noise. And it sounds kind of like a clap. There you go. Nice and simple. Beautiful, simple sound design, that's what we do. Now we've got another, we've got another, I call it smash clap. The actual preset's called stereo percussion. It's quite an interesting, highly coloured sound. But again, this patch looks really complicated. In fact, you can see it's a lot of repeats of, of, of the same things. So let's look at what, what this patch is. Let's just stop it for a second. What we've got coming in, we have some parts of the patch are listening to the note on, some parts are listening to the whole gate of the signal. I can't see anything coming directly from the release, so we don't care about the release, which is not usual, which is not unusual, I should say. So the trigger, what's that triggering? That is triggering these delay lines. It's got four delay lines here, um, and I wonder what they're delaying. Let's have a look. The input they're delaying ah they're delaying the trigger itself to go into a sample and hold and then that sample and hold these sample and hold devices here all were receiving a little bit of noise from this noise device but because they're all receiving a bit of the noise at slightly delayed times, you can see all these times are a bit different. 6.5, 6.52, change that a little bit. 2.2, 2 milliseconds or 1.4 milliseconds. They're all getting a little bit 
so this white noise coming out of here is running very fast and it's changing numbers very, very quickly. And just by delaying the signal a little bit, by, by delaying the white noise a little bit, we can um, give like kind of a, pull different modulation values out of that signal all at the same time um, because they're all receiving a slightly little bit of data from this white noise. So what's that going to? So these sample and hold boxes are receiving a bit of white noise and then being triggered by the sample and hold in this delay. When you press a note down, the gates, these, these sample and hold triggers are holding the sound from the white noise and pushing that data to the frequency of these object filters. There's also a bit of noise going through these object filters. So these object filters are set to, I mean, you can see there's slightly different object um, modal kind of filters going on here. The frequencies are all pretty much the same by the looks of it. So it's the output from the sample and hold that's affecting the frequencies. It's giving us the color, it's giving us um, the sound that we need. So let's just let's turn some of these off. So there's, that's one, that's just this one. And we can obviously change the object like that. And turn up two. That's over the left as well, there's another one, oh right, yeah. So there's two of them on one side and two of them on the other, giving a nice density and richness to the sound, a width. And because each of these object filters is getting a different frequency value from these, from the noise going into the sample and hold, going back into this frequency modulation here, each of these has a different tone every time it makes a noise. Which gives you, I mean, it's called stereo percussion, just like excellent bangs and crashes, right? Sounds cool. And then we've got the output of this stereo mix where all these object filters are going in Output of this is going into a VCA here, which has a CV controller from this ADSR here, this, um, this envelope generator here. And we've got a couple of macros here. Let's see what's going on. So that's for, all, that's for changing all the objects. You can see that's attached to the object modulation. And this one is going to the decay and release. So this one's making it shorter. Longer, shorter. I mean, I can, we can also hear a delay on here, so let's just pull that delay down and then reverb down. Much, much raw, raw signal. And what have we got going to... So this is just uh, describing the density of the noise so we can change the output. change the kind of density of the signal that's feeding these filters. Maybe that's more white noisy. That's, that's less, well, it's a less dense white noise. Ooh, interesting. It's great, isn't it? There you go, that's, that's the clap sound. I like that. <laughs> Moving on to hi-hat so this is interesting because i'm not actually playing any notes here like you can see these regions i'm hitting you know cr creating a signal with midi notes and stuff this is just one single one single note triggering a gate sequencer and you can see the gate sequencer here we have it's nice and nice and Typically basic gate sequencer from a modular environment. We've got eight steps, and um, we can we have each you know, outputs coming from these steps doing different things. This has been set up quite basic. All it's doing is triggering um, an envelope on something. So it'll be triggering this, I expect. Here's the envelope here that's going to be making the noise. It's going to be shoving a bit of uh, white noise through the filter. That tends to be what. Uh, hi-hat these kinds of noises are a little bit of white noise going through a bit of treatment 
and then go into the output. So what have we got happening? Let's just have a quick look. We've got the master clock controlling the gate. The output of the gate. Oh, hold on. The gate is controlling the master clock. So yes, when the gate goes down, the clock starts and then starts playing the uh, sequencer. And we've got these are ins, so we're going out. So we've got the so this basically the master clock and all these cables coming out of the master clock are controlling this main gate sequence here. This is what's happening. We can add a little interesting. So yeah. After that gate sequence, so we've got two things coming out of there. We've got the basic gate signal going into this input. We've got a, this is a logic box here. So this will be sending a signal out dependent on things. So what's going on? We've got the pulse. What, what's this? What logic is this working on? So we've got the play signal coming out of here. So while the play is running, that'll be a one. That'll be sending out something positive. And then when this is sending a gate, when this is at a position in its sequence, excuse my uh, graphic slowdowns, when that little red light that's scrolling down hits a green light, the gate will send, this gate signal will send a pulse out to this input B. And as you can see, what's going on is we've got this purple cable connected to the AND. So it will only send out a signal when both of these are alive, number five, uh, which is basically when the gate, when the, when the clock's running and when the sequencer sends out a message. So when the sequencer set, when it's running and we hit a spot in the sequencer where there is a green light, where we've got the th thing switched on, this bit will process, and oh no, sorry, this, this bit will process the zero, the one coming out of here, sorry. And because we've got an AND going on here, this is the AND operation here. As when both of those are one, which is what an AND is waiting for, it will send a signal out. And that signal looks like it will turn up a low pass filter that's, that's contained as part of the noise box, the noise block. So yeah, let's just get it running and have a listen. So I kind of wanna, Let's just turn this up for the moment, turn density up, see if that makes a clear. It's definitely more. Yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely a denser kind of sound, isn't it? No, no surprise there, being the knob is a density knob. There's a kind of graininess to this you can hear. Um, so what happens if we just turn this off that... So if we... So this is what is being modulated by this output. If we turn it up to maximum, and it's still making a difference, probably other stuff going on further down the chain, but this is one of the things that it's modulating, that this, this AND signal is modulating, is opening up that low pass filter for this noise, noise box. It's coming out of the noise box, out of here, this little audio line here going into a crusher. And this will be like a, yeah, like as it says, it's a bit reduction, bit reduction, rate reduction. So it will be digitally transforming the signal by reducing the dynamic range of the bits and the sample rate. So slowing down how many bits appear per second that can be allocated as sample points to describe the complexity of the sound. But this was, I think this was on full. So it's on full rate and we, we weren't bit crushing too heavily. I think it was on four or something. But yeah, you can hear as soon as I... Actually, white noise isn't a great example of <laughs> uh, demonstrating dynamic depth reduction. Uh, depth, uh, bit, bit rate reduction. But sample rate demonstrates it very well, as you can hear. And what have we got going on? So there's nothing much going on. We're just doing a little bit of touching up just taking the edge off the high end with a bit of bit crushing. Slowing the signal down, reducing the dynamic range basically of, of a bit of white noise, which is unusual, but why not? That is going into the filter. 
that's going directly out of the white noise, as you can see, into the input of the filter. So this filter is directly affecting this crusher. So or the output of this crushed, the noise that's gone into the crusher going into the object filter. Something's happening here because we've got a signal. This is being triggered by a gate sequencer. As you can see, we've got a pulse coming out of here. So every time a step is hit on here, we get like a square signal, a kind of sudden one and then a collapse to zero again coming out. And that's being detected as a trigger here. So we're triggering, we're opening something. What are we opening? Let's have a look at what this signal is doing. So input, we've got the output of the crushed noise going directly into the filter. And this envelope generator here is increasing the resonance by the looks of it. I mean, that's what that knob is. Yeah. It's turning the resonance up. We maybe... Oh, actually, look, we've got a macro knob defined here to the decay, which is going to keep that resonance up a little bit longer. Let's just turn that up. There you go. That's what that sounded like. So it adds a little bit of interesting colour to the hi-hat. I like that. And it's probably, I expect, because this is probably what I'd do, another one of these macro knobs is attached to the frequency. So you can have a massive crappy old hi-hat from the, from the 1810s, or like a beautiful, pristine, fresh metal hi-hat, fresh from the press, where all the hi-hats come from, the hi-hat press. Uh, so, yeah, that's what's happening there. Let's just go back to that again. We've got the envelope signal coming out of this ADSR here, this envelope generator here, that's basically increasing the resonance of the white noise, crushed white noise going into this filter. And we've also got a macro here that changes the general frequency of the way this filter is running, which changes the perceived tone of the hi-hat. And then we're going straight out in to the output mixer and that's the whole chain and that's the hi-hat where's the on beat there we go it's a good hi-hat like okay let's go to these toms Excuse my voice. Let me warm up a little and let's have a look at these toms. Have a little bit. Right. Well, again, this is another sequencer action, hot sequencer action going on here. We can see that this is being triggered, sending something to somewhere, isn't it? So let's have a look. Okay, we don't have any pitch stuff coming out of the controller. All we've got is a gate signal. And that gate's coming from... Oh, look, it looks like when we press the key down, it's starting the master clock. So I'm going to, I'm going to do, yeah, so I'm now just hitting the keyboard freely. So I'm not sure if you can see what's going on here. The key's not going down. As soon as I press a key down on my keyboard, that little gate signal here turns on and that sends an in to the main clock over here, which tells it to start playing. And that clock is going out to here, which is the gate sequencer. So by pressing the note on the keyboard, we're starting the internal sequencer um, from running. Starting it? We're starting it running. Still sounds terrible. Um, but yeah, that's so we've got a basic sequencer here, chucking out pulses and stuff. Let's see what it's doing with those pulses. So these are the ins. We just ignore that because we've just gone over them. We've got pulse. I don't think there's anything coming out of the gate. It just looks like pulse at the moment, doesn't it? Yeah, so out of this gate sequencer, we've got something going to an ADSR over here, which I expect, suspect, 
is a, oh, I was going to say volume ADSR, but now I'm looking down here. Here's the volume ADSR. That's the volume envelope generator, which is making, keeping the sound short. We, we know it's a volume generator because it's an envelope and it's controlling the VCA, I was going to say. But let's start this again. Let's have a look from the top. Let's follow this through. So we've got the gate signal that's starting the, ma the master clock, which is running the gate sequencer here. And then we have this pulse going out to both of these ADSRs, both of these, both of these envelope generators. So they're both doing something on each of these pulses, on each of these um, lit steps. It's sending a signal to both of those, to so this guy and this guy. Is it a guy? I don't know. I assume it is. Um, and then we've got... So before we hit that envelope over here, we've got this sequence of objects that are making a noise. So what is the noise? Let's have a look. We have the, well, the classic VCO here. All of its outputs are connected to this mixer here by the looks of it. So it's a very rich signal. We've got the saws and squares and the sub at various different volumes going into the object filter. That's just going in there. And we've got no modulation on here. We're just going straight out of the object filter. So let's just see. We don't even have any macros attached to the object filter. So let's just, I'm just going to play it. Yeah, I mean, unsurprisingly, it's by changing the main object or the object when, by sort of adjusting the main object filter changes the tone of this this tom declared tom and then oh right interesting you'd think that would have more of an effect on the sound as we're doing a massive we're affecting it rather enormously just by saying filter it through this different filter network. But we can't really hear it. I wonder why that is. I can see from the next step it's because the ladder filter is very, very closed. It's not very open at all. So I'm just going to reset that noise. And open this cutoff. Let's just see if there's anything attached to that cutoff. Ah, look, see, we have this envelope is attached to this cutoff here. Here's the modulation depth. And if we just open it up, oh, let me just wait while my mouse reconnects. Massively mangled by the saturator at the end that could well be kind of losing the sense of pitch. Now, all the high frequencies that this stage is adding into it are being lopped off by this filter work here. And we've got the slope on the tightest, steepest filter, 24 decibels an octave. What's that? That's four pole. percussive though and then in this last phrase here we've got a macro this last phrase this last phase we've got a macro attached to the envelope generator here let's just i mean not surprisingly the, the sound is hanging around a little bit longer that's a nice tight tom though isn't it tight distorted tom um and let's see what's going on in this last saturation stage because we've got this last saturation stage and this little ADSR here and this envelope here we're doing are working all together. So let's see what's going on. We've got this gain signal here that's being... So we can turn up the amount that that's being distorted. And we've got like a um, hard and soft um, clamping clipping on both sides, soft clipping on the top and hard clipping on the bottom, I think that's what both is. And 
this this macro, the value. Okay, so without any saturation or distortion, that's the clean signal. So we stick a bit on. I like messing with the bias. Let's pull in the signal kind of fiercely DC offset. Sounds nice though. Heavily distorted and offset. So the signal is still here at this point, it's here. Signal is at this point coming out of these two cables here, going in to this VCA. And this, this is doing a multiply of the gate. So this is saying to only listen to the yeah, this is only letting the sound through when the clock is running. When the gate's down kind of thing, which also means the clock is running. I can't see what this is doing. Oh, I see. This is the tuning for uh, this VCO. So there we go. We can make that do more work. it more like a make it more like nothing else like nothing make it more like ne not an instrument there we go so yeah this this, this envelope's just um, doing the pitch bending of the oscillator before it goes into all the oscillators before they go into this mixer and then go into the object filter which adds interesting harmonics and then that's being cut off with this ladder filter and being um, messed around by this, or well, distorted by the saturator here. Oh, I've just noticed this, this should go there because the output of this envelope is messing with the filter of the ladder, the frequency of the ladder filter. Put them words, put them words in the right order. Yeah, so out the saturator into the VCA here that's kind of stopping the signal when the, uh, if, if a key is let go or the master clock is stopped, it's all the same thing. And that's the patch. In perspective, that's the sound. Anyway, let's have a look at Le Bass. It's busy, isn't it? Sounds busy. Let's have a look. So we've got... What have we got coming out of the controller area, the kind of signal control area? We've got a gate, which is, as you'd expect, we need it to open up things to make a sound. We've we're taken the pitch. No surprise there. We've taken the pitch from the note uh, and any bending we might apply to that note. So we're going, first of all, through a glide. Everything's being smoothed. Um, by this this knob up here. That's about all there is to that. It's just doing a thing. I can see we've got a reset here. All oh, right, so obviously, yes, we don't want... So when a note is pressed down, we are kind of setting the glide time to zero. Um, but it looks like any notes after that... It's kind of maybe that's a, that's a legato sort of activity. <laughs> Let's slow it down. So that's legato. And that's pressing the notes a distance apart. Here there's no sliding. As soon as I hold the note down, that's what's going on here. This is, uh, that's the glides doing that. And that pitch being detected by the keyboard, etc., is going in and being glided and slid slid around is going into this VCO here and that's chucking out we've got a sub going into this polarizing mixer here polarizing mixer just means you can um, turn the signal on its like invert the signal rather than just turn it up and down you can turn it up and down and then upside down basically um, and we've got a sine wave coming out of here going into oh, each of these distortions, the wave folder, the wave wrapper, and the rectifier. And it looks like each of those is also 
sending its signal. Yeah, there you go. So each of these outputs here, this out here is going to top top slot of the polarizing mixer. This one's going to the second slot of the polarizing mixer, and this one's going to the third slot of the polarizing mixer. And it looks like the sub from this VCO is going to the fourth slot. Um, looking at these values, they look very quiet. That looks very quiet. That looks very quiet. That looks quite noisy. So at first glance, it looks like what's coming out of here, out of these three devices, isn't making any noise because these values are set to zero. But hold on a second. That's what these modulation knobs are for, and they appear to be attached to macros. So let's just have a look. There you go. These three knobs here, with these cables attached to the macro area, are amplifying the signal. So... so that's kind of inverting it. That's... that's um, let's put these to zero. Is it zero? Oh, we've still got the sub going through. So that's... This is what's coming out of Wave Folder 1. So we've got the classic, ECO, uh, classic VCO sending its sine, or cosine by the looks of it, into each of these wave folder distortion devices. Wave folder first, out of the wave folder, into slot one of the polarizing mixer. We can see that here, out into the polarizing mixer. And then by adjusting this macro knob, which is affecting the depth of the modulation in the polarizing mixer. So that's the right way up. That's as a signal was coming out of the wave folder. And we invert it, and that's upside down. Doesn't sound any difference on it on its own. And as we know, that's kind of how things work. Soon as we start blending it with other things, it all goes to, to boop. So it all goes to crap. There we go. Turn the sub up. You can hear how different that is. It's indescribably different, but it's definitely different. So that's cool polarizing mixer there. Um, and this is, yeah, bringing together these different signals here. Let's just reset the patch. Sometimes a handy if there was a knob to reset the patch. Um, but here we go. So we've got these three outputs here, these three distortion things. And we can see what, the, we can see what they're doing actually with these uh, scopes here. So this is the output from the wave folder. This is the wave wrapper. And that's the rectifier. the signal down here is being shoved up and down uh, sort of either side of the center line look that's the bias adjustment it's kind of it's like a DC offset but it's when, when you apply it to a signal before you hit other layers of distortion and filtering and stuff it's a really useful sonic area lots of fun stuff to be had especially when you start layering things Right, excuse me, I'm sounding a bit ill now, so let's move on. So what have we got? We've got this multi-growl thing. Okay, so we've got these single signs going into these distortion layers being mixed by the polarizing mixer, going out of the mixer into micro high pass, which is just like a simple high pass device to take some of the low off. It's set quite low, as you can see. Pretty blimmin' low. And the slope... It looks like it's only set to one pole, which is 6 dB. So it's quite a gentle roll-off at the bottom of the low frequencies. And 
the same goes for the high pass. It's going out of the high pass into, excuse me, the low pass. And that's just taking a gentle bit off. Oh, so that's a two pole. And we've got it set quite. Oh, you can hear what's happening. It's just taking off some, some of that, some of that stuff. Nice. And then we're going out into this VCA, which is, as we know, an, a, a volume generator, volume changer. Voltage controlled amplifier. So we're changing the amplifier, the amplification, affecting the amplifier. I'm going to repeat myself and catch myself in circles. But this, as you can see, is being affected by this ADSR envelope generator here. So every time this receives a gate, a gate signal from a note coming in, it will trigger this envelope generator and affect this VCA here, basically turning the signal down. And although is it because at the moment, the way this is set up, it sustains on full. So if we turn the sustain down, we can just get a really, sh really short bass sound. But we don't want that, we want. Oh, also, we've got the modulation wheel attached to some part of it. What's it attached to? Like biases. It's attached to a few different things on the different distortion devices. It's attached to the bias on the rectifier, um, the wrap on the wave wrapper. Sounds like an artist. And the fold depth on the wave folder. So modulation wheel is attached to three different things. You wouldn't even realise it. You wouldn't even realise it. I mean, you can see the changes in the, these little scopes as well. You can see how the signal is getting denser. The depth of um, distortion. And we're going out of this volume thing here into uh, a basic filter. A basic EQ. Let's just see what that's doing. That seems to be... So the signal's going in and then it's going straight out into the output mixer here. But what is, what is it doing? We seem to be turning the signal up. Oh, we turned it. Okay, this EQ filter is currently acting as a low shelf. So we basically, we have a frequency set, which is 185 hertz. And we're gaining it up with a Q of half. So how does that go? Yeah, that's like... That's really tight, that's really wide. And we're gaining the bass up. I see what's going on there. So we're just turning the bass up because it's a bass sound, so why the hell wouldn't you turn the bass up? Okay, let's stop going as mad as we were going and move on to a chord. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna set that back to the original sound. And look at a chord. What's a what is a chord? A chord is more than one note being played at the same time in a in a planned fashion. I'm not going to try and describe a chord to you. You probably know what a chord is, but let's see what this patch is because one note. Let's see. Look, we've only got one note being triggered here, but oh, three notes happening. So what's going on? other than cool house sounds from like the 90s or something. And let's break this let's break this sound down into its constituent components. What have we got? So we've got from the control area the signal coming in from the keyboard out of the pitch, let's see. Let's select that and we can see the pitch is going into the glide. Straight into the glide and then out of the glide into this first oscillator here doesn't seem to be affecting the other ones which is interesting isn't it let's see what's going on so there's pitch going out directly into these other two vcos so only this only this vco is having its pitch bent let's put it politely and these other two aren't they're just going straight to the pitch as as received or the offset of the pitch as received by the keyboard kind of input signal thing 
which is interesting. So only one of the notes is gliding. Interesting. Um, but we've got these set up to be uh, offset. So what's that? We've got this one probably set to a C or something. That's a G3. So that's a G. This is a C. And that's a, and that's a B flat. So we've got a G and a C and a B flat. And that's kind of, yeah, like a seventh. Is this, is this doing a note as well? Oh, no, that's, that's not generating a sound, is it? No, that's being used as a modulation, I think. Oh, no, it's a, yeah, so you can use to modulate the release. Okay, let's, let's carry on as we were going. It's quite basic. It might not look it, but it's relatively basic. Three oscillators at different tunings. We've looked at those tunings. We've got, a, what was it, G and a C and a B flat. Is that what it said? Yeah, G and a C and a B flat. Uh, all going into this mixer here. And interestingly, I can see only three oscillators here, but we've got five things going into this mixer here. So let's just have a look, see what these are. So, oh, right, we've got several coming out of the main classic VCO. We're listening to the sub and the square. And sorry, that was a saw, wasn't it? The sub with the saw, the sub and the square of the main classic VCO and the compact VCOs, we're just getting the, well, I mean, you can decide what shape you want with this little um, knob here, but we seem to be getting the saw based on how it's currently configured. There's no modulations going on there to, to affect that. So we're getting two saws coming here and we've got a saw and a sub and a bit of square coming from the VCO one there, all going out into the filter, which is being modulated at the same time as the amplitude because so we've got it coming out of this mixer going into the filter and then going out of the filter into this vca here this amplitude um envelope uh, amplitude controller try to stop stuttering stammering and then out of that amplitude controller into oh another mix device down here I think this was doing some stereo stuff because there's some stereo wobbling going on. Can you hear that? Right, left, right, left. And it seems to be unrelated to um, the tempo or anything like that. So let's just see what's going on. We're going out of here into the VCA. Actually, I'm going to pull this inverter back here because it's actually attached to this mix control here. And yeah, I think it's easy to see what's going on here, right? So we've got this patch coming out of an LFO. Let's see what this pulse is doing. This pulse is being triggered by the clock. And its length is described as very short, very, very short. So as soon as the, as soon as the project plays, this triggers that this turns the release up. So this is modifying the release quite a lot. The modulation depth is on absolute maximum. We've also got another control for the release here on this macro knob here, which is not doing so much. But let's just have a look and see what this is doing. So we're getting a pulse out of here. When, when the music starts, we're getting a pulse out of there. It's multiplying it by 100 as well, so the length of the pulse is a lot longer than what it says. It's a lot longer than half a second. That makes it five seconds. And it's not... It's not receiving anything from any notes coming in. It really is just opening up from when the clock starts. 
and then sending a pulse to the release of the uh, this is, oh, this is in, this is the release of both the filter and the amplitude. It's funny this should probably be I'm gonna well this is this 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 is doing like modulation work for this the these little things up here. But also we've got this LFO that is modulating ah yeah the filter. Okay, that's modulating the filter kind of inversely. You can see that knob going back because there's four modulation slots for this filter uh, frequency. And one of them is what's coming out of this, which is a slow half, 30 BPM, half a hertz sine wave. Oh, also we're affecting this pulse as well with that. We've got... And we're also affecting the rate of glide. So this LFO is adding a lot of kind of chaos. Chaos? I mean, controlled chaos. Controlled um, movement into the patch itself. And... Yeah. It's moving multiple things at the same time. And I think also it's doing this stuff. It's doing this other inverter stuff, isn't it? There's something else going on here. Okay. So it's the panning. This is how it's doing the, this is how it's moving the signal around from left to right. We have got a signal coming out of this LFO at the same rate as this uh, filter. It might be, this is like an audio representation of this LFO. You can just about hear what it's doing when you listen to that. But then we've got this triangle wave coming out of that LFO going into this inverter and just basically turning it upside down. So, so this is an inverter, there's an LFO input specially designed for inverting an LFO signal. And that is changing the volume of this side of the mix. So let's see what's going on here. We can see what's going on. This, this particular mix control where the sound is coming out of the line of sound makers, it's going into this mixer at the top. That's out, this is in. and it's going out into the left port of the output mixer. And this other one is going into the right port of the output mixer. And this inverter is, you can see what's going on through here. So we've got one, this, this triangle wave coming out of the LFO is turning the volume of one side, uh, is turning the volume up and down. And this side is turning the volume down and up, basically the opposite direction to what this is doing. So it sounds like the sound, well, the sound appears to move around from left to right because we're basically turning the volumes up and down, which is kind of what a balance does. A balance knob on an old hi-fi kind of does that, turns the volume up and down on either side. So that's that's the sound. That's the sound. Uh, we've, we've got to the end of a chord sound. There's a couple more noises left yet. Hope I don't breach the boring threshold. But... We've now deconstructed and discovered this chord sound. House, house chord. Shame the music isn't very housey. But let's have a look at this, this sound. This is kind of the lead sound. I think this is a default sound that loads up when you start Multiphonic CV2. And it is a nice kind of vocally lead sound. Perfect for the modular environment as it's a, it's a, mono slash legato kind of sound so a bit of tea enjoy some tea yourself i'd recommend it so let's just play this and look at what's going on it's a nice sound yeah oh yeah Right, so we've got signals coming in from keyboard. Got the trigger, which is obviously just a, a, a like a little peak when the note goes down. A signal when the note goes down. That's triggering an ADSR here. And we've also got the gate, which is also doing the ADSR triggering as well. 
We need to we need to both because trigger is just to tell a thing when to start. It doesn't tell it when to stop. Um, so you can't control a whole ADSR signal with just a trigger uh, because part of the ADSR signal is the sustain. And the sustain um, is only reached when the end of the decay signal has been met, basically. So the attack and the decay parts of an envelope need to happen before you get to the sustain part of the signal. And you can only get to the sustain signal if you hold the note down long enough, which is like holding, which is what this is, as a gate signal. So we're holding the signal down so that the signal can get to the next part of the phase. The envelope can get the envelope generator can get to the next part of the phase. Uh, the sustain in this in this regard. So we have pitch as well. Where's that coming? Where's that going? Seems to be. I'm actually going to just make that 50% again, and then we can see that it's going into the pitch of the object filter itself. And, and a glide. Got pitch going into the glide. That's an interesting. Oh, it's an input. Okay, yeah, so we're basically like describing. So this macro knob here, which is attached to the glide function, is uh, kind of slowing down. Um, some control part of the signal. I suspect the pitch. We can see that if we move this back here, we can see that the output, so we're going in from the pitch and then out into the oscillator. So we're slowing down the movement of the pitch with this glide controller here, which is uh, adjustable with this macro knob. Increasing that will increase the uh, slow down the movement and and we can change it the other way as well now let's just put that back there we can move that guy there then they're, they're not all guys by the way so we've got pitch coming into the glide which is affecting this vco output what signals have we got coming out of here because we've got a big mixer here we can see signals going in here we've got Nothing coming out of the sub. We've got the cosine slash sine output triangle. Nothing coming out of the saw. And the squares going to the object filter, directly to the object filter by the looks of it. And it looks like we've got the mix. Let's 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 set this up right. Let's order this right. So it looks like that actually the output of What's going in here? We've got the output of the main VCO two two main VCO outputs, and then we've got the output from this object filter going in here. And these are on minimum. They're all on minimum by the looks of it. So what's turning them up? Let's see. Um, I can see a modulation source here, so what's that doing? There we go, there's the culprit. That's what's turning up the signals in the mixer, this ADSR here. So, you can make them happen a bit quicker. But we want to blur them in, we want to slow them, slur them in. see I think did I have that after there yes so each of these sources going into the mixer here is being affected by this ADSR here that's what's making them loud and they appear to be short as well they appear to be fading because this decay even though it's set to like five and a half seconds the sustains at zero so the sound will eventually fade you could adjust it turn the sustain up and it will stay forever. It's kind of strangely vocally, isn't it? Oh, it's nice. Right, let's see what this LFO is doing because it's doing something. 
Have a look. Oh, so we are modulating the tuning. Let's pull this back here. We are modulating the tuning only a tiny bit. You can see that that modulation depth is on not even one percent, just over half of a percent. And we've got this going to the filter, the frequency. And that's modulating that hardly any as well, like less than half of a percent. Oh, it's quite nice, isn't it? Um, so there's these little modulations, these little tactics are just for subtle organic modulation, the kind of humanization of the sound. Otherwise, it would probably be quite static. Actually, let's try it out. Let's turn them off. Turn that off. Turn. Oh, there we go. I mean, it's a, it's a sound. Now, if we leave the actual VCO static and just modulate the filter, there's a bit of movement there. It might be enough, it might not be enough. Depends on what you're looking for. And let's massively exaggerate that. Although that... That Star Trek style opera craziness. Anyway, let's... Um, yeah, I think that's, that's that sound. Going into this mixer here and then out of the mixer. It's a central sound. So it's uh, in the middle of the, the stereo spectrum. It's mono, so it's just in the middle, only one source going into here. I forgot to mention as well, there is a basic kind of delay and reverb on a lot of these patches. Um, they don't tend to be a big feature. Some of them, some of the claps, I think, use reverbs a bit more than the other patches. Um, but the main, th the main thrust of these patches is what's going on in the network of craziness beneath the global stuff that's where that's where the joy lies whoever joy is so let's i think this patch is done yes real real basic couple of oscillators going through a filter that's very subtly wobbling around let's just put it back and reset the patch and go for the last one probably gone on way too long but i hope I hope you're still here listening and watching and being enthusiastic about look at this nuttiness. Look at this. I don't know where to start here. I should probably shouldn't have shouldn't have picked this, but wow. I was like, oh my god, it's the it's that. And people of a certain age will know that sound. It was on a lot of tracks and things over the years, over the 90s. Um including Enigma. Um Sadness Part 1, I think it was called Sadness Part 2, one of those things. But let's look at how this sound is constructed. This is the final sound, the final furlong. We're almost at the end of this, whatever it is, exhibition. Um, performance, this is a performance. But we're almost at the end. Let's just look at this nutty patch. I'll probably have, say, the nuttiest one till till, till last, till, till last, till last. I've saved the, this one to the end. Probably shouldn't have, um, but let's have a look at it. There's a lot of complex stuff going in here, and oh my god, I probably shouldn't have started this adventure. But here we are. So I'm going to press a note down and see what's going on. So we've got stuff coming out of what I'm going to do is just it's kind of easier to see what's going on when you hold a mouse over a cable with a bit of translucency prior to it. So we've got the trigger here. Trigger is resetting this gate sequencer. And it looks like this gate sequencer has, as well as eight steps, it has values on those steps. So I would be guessing that the kind of notes that we can hear, the, -doo -doo, the change in notes is being described here by this device. Um, and I suspect because of the way this outputs are connected. This outputs are connected. The way this control voltage here is going directly to the pitch of the VCO. I'm going to pull this back here. 
so we can see what's going on there. That pitch, so that pulse output, which is just like going to be uh, sending a quick signal on each step, is going to this ADSR over here, This which is controlling a load of mi input mixers, a load of input mixers. So that's turning all these signals up. You can see they're all at zero. If we turn them up, what have we got? Loads of crazy, loads of craziness. I mean, they're not craziness, it's all just a bit of noise. So these are the layers of this sound. You can hear a bit of noise, there's a bit of cleanness. I don't know where this, that must be there somewhere, but I can't hear it. Although having a look at the way this modulation is described, it's not pulling as much in, like the main tone is that, which is not a surprise, because that's what you can hear. There's a little bit of noise, a little bit of that other grungy stuff and whatever, a bit of, bit of pureness, a bit of clean, clean tone. So let's have a look. I kind of want to see if I can... Oh yeah, so we can change the range. So we, this, this is kind of evidence that this device is chucking out the pitches that, that that's changing from and into. We can change the uh, depth of that range. And that just... Uh, That's quite handy. So there's a lot of power there, I can imagine. Imagine being able to modulate that. Being able to modulate these two. Wouldn't that be fun? Nevertheless, we can move on and see what's going on here. So we've got this pulse, it's just triggering this ADSR. What's going, what's this controlling? Oh yeah, the mix volume. So this is just the, even this is fading. So even though this sustains on zero, this decay, it's quite a long sound, but only six and a half seconds long. Not quite like a sampler where if you slow it down, it gets slower, obviously. If you play it higher up the keyboard, it gets faster and slow down. Doo -doo -doo should be. Oh, you can play it between without triggering. Ah, right, there, this is the interesting part. So, so here we are. The mix is just adjusting the volume. We've got some other stuff going on here. Let's have a look. The noise, where's that going? That's just going into one of the sockets over there and also into this mix device here. We've got another mix here. And where's that going? Oh, just into the other output. Let's, let's just turn these down. This is quite a complex noise. So that's that side. What have we got over here? So that's going from... Right, so that's the same. That's the same signal. And then we've got this middle bit. Oh, that's just the off. So if you look at this signal up here, I'm pressing down, the gate's open. There's no noise coming out because I've got certain stuff muted. But as soon as I lift up, you can see this release light happen. The noise comes out. And that's the that's a part of the sound. Um, if we turn everything back up again. It's like the sound of the the because it's um you know, it's a it's a copy of a real blown instrument, a pipe instrument that you blow across the top of, like a flute kind of thing. And um, when you let go, when you stop breathing, or when you play it in a certain way, you get kind of a harmonic release when you let go. It's like that kind of thing. So that's what that off, that's what the release is triggering. So the release, this, this thing here is triggering an extra stage in these two envelopes here, this one and this one, that's where the release is going to give the sound this final part, the final part of the sound. Gosh. What a lovely bit of sound design. So half of it, half of this is describing just that. And if I let go, 
it goes quiet. But if I turn this up, you get that little bit at the end, probably a bit loud. And yeah, that's going... Each of these parts of the... No, so these are configured quite similarly because they need to be doing the kind of same kind of sound. So we've got the same... I suspect the same oscillators coming out of here into the mixer. Yeah, we've got the saw and the triangle. And we've also got the sine going into there, but not into this mixer. We've only got the saw and the triangle going into this mixer. And we've got that, which is the bit of noise and going into input three, which you need. And all that, once that's been mixed together, is going into this ADSR here. Is it? Oh no, that mix is going straight to the output. Uh, right, so let's see what's affecting the volumes here. Uh, this will be... Oh yeah, okay, here we go. Yeah, is this, it is this, it is this. So this envelope is only giving because we've got this connected to the release on this gate here this gate signal here connected to the release so it will only happen where this will only trigger when a note is released when the, when the note off is detected and the sound of that you know this this is um, a control signal which is affecting this added together set of noises a little bit of noise from here and this vco here into this mixer and that mix is going, going directly back to the middle channel of the output mixer. As we discovered earlier, that's just the, the off, the off sound. Just that. The boom. And we've got some other stuff here. I want to see what's going on here. We're running out of time. Running out of time. This is just a very subtle tuning thing by the looks of it. Yeah, so that's just doing a kind of same as this. But not too different. Same as this uh, oscillator here, kind of wobbling the pitch a tiny little amount. Um, that's all that's doing. We've got another clock down here. Let's see what this is doing. We can change the... What's, what's this? So we've got a clock. As soon as we press... So we're starting it by... Yeah, because we've got a gate here. And we've got, so we're starting this clock running by pressing a note. And then that clock signal, which is a, a, a load of taps in a row, dub -dub -dub, is being added together. We're doing some logic on it. And it's this pulse that's part of the logic. So we're adding together, we're doing an AND operation on it. And So we're sending a clock, uh, we're sending a modified clock signal to this gate device here. That's what we're doing. This clock, this gate device sequencer isn't attached to the master clock, it's attached to a modified clock signal, which means that, yeah, we can stop it, basically. So we can run through these first two notes, which is the pitch modulation. God, my screen updates are so terrible. We're going through these two steps and then stopping at this one you can see where the leds is the light is the step is the step that the sequence is currently on but we're doing the first two steps and then and then ending up on four and then and then that's the end of the sound there's no kind of activity we've told the devices we've told the uh envelope generators to be quiet now because there's no signal happening and these are only going to send a signal out when there's activity on one of these steps. So the first two steps, and then nothing. And that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, the product of an AND operation on a clock that's being controlled by the gate signal and a pulse signal added together, well, had an doing an operation on them, an AND operation on them. So when there's both, we send the gate, we send the clock signal out to this sequencer and it runs through the thing and does all the magical stuff that make the... 
the sound from the 90s. Oh, that's an... I'm going to have to do a breakdown of my Enigma track. Okay, that is all the... Oh, my God, we took ages, but I think it was worth it. We had a good look at the complexity of CV2. And, um, yeah, I think that was a good little exploration. I kind of enjoyed it anyway. Um, I hope you did as well. Let's listen to this monstrosity in all its... There's not much glory to be had here. This one. Anyway, thank you for attending, and um, I hope you enjoyed our gaze at Multiphonic CV2 um, and the patches which we deconstructed. Let me know if you um, want me to do another one or have any synthesizers that you would like me to deconstruct the presets from or of, probably from. Anyway, have a good day, make some beautiful noises, and I'm just going to unmute that and play this. Because, wow. I mean, what I do like about this little preset deconstruction exercise is that all the sounds, I have to do a little piece where all the sounds are from one synthesizer, and they're all presets. And then none of these are modified, none of these are my, my interpretation of a sound, it's just the flat presets straight out of the boxes themselves. But yeah, thanks for coming. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Make some cool noises. Thank you very much.